device gang out here. Mary Jane, good afternoon. Welcome to About That Time. I'm your host, Noah Rubin, Editor-in-Chief of Mary Jane. Today, we are extremely excited to have a special guest in the building, John Doe. Hey, hey, hey. What's up? How you Pleasure. doing? Thanks for coming through. Thank you. How's it going? Me. It's going pretty good. Enjoying some Cali time? Yeah, enjoying some. Rolling, rolling up the rolling Cali up the backwoods. Time. Thank you for reminding me. We're a little we're starting a little late today, but we're gonna get it started. We're gonna spark it up. We're East our East time. Coasters, you beat us to it. 420, you guys are doing it right. We're, you know, you know, West Coast style. We're a couple minutes late. <laughs> it happens, you know? Lateness is a part of life. You gotta just roll with the punches. Yes, sir. Now are you, have you been a backwoods lady since day one? No. Um, I started off like all ratchet teenagers smoking Swishers, um, flavor Swishers at that. Which your flavor? It was pineapples, which Pineapple. I'm so glad to have grown out of. Um, and then I was on the raw waves for a little while, a little while. Um, but I really just liked the, I don't know, I'm not supposed to smoke tobacco, so I think that's why I like them. I like the blunt so much. Because you're breaking the rules. Exactly. I'm Sometimes you got to break rules out there just to feel good. Do it, yeah. It's a, that's a reality situation, guys. If you didn't know, we always smoke on the THC designed cannabis. I'm smoking on some XJ13. You're smoking on some Lemon Larry. Ooh, we're Lemon Larry. Fun. I'm in a sativa lane. I'll you're phone in a hybrid him. lane. We're having we're having a good time. I'm phone him. I'm smoking that Larry. Y'all know what's we're, going on. We're smoking that Lemon. <laughs> Y'all know what's going on. It's that lemon life. You're ready to live it, right? Hey, when life gives you lemons, get Smoke high. them. Yeah. <laughs> get high as Guys, well. if, if anyone needed a little bit of life advice today, when life gives you lemons, smoke it. Smoking that Larry on phone now. Now, if there was a Larry that you actually was, were smoking with, Larry David, you mess with Larry David? What's up with Larry David? I don't know too enough about Larry David. All right, but fair. Pass on Larry. Um, let's see, what other Larry Larrys Larry Hoover. Are? Larry Hoover. That's who I want to smoke the blunt with. Okay. All right, that's what we're talking about on phone now. You know what I'm saying? The um, the very famous GD, uh, you know, you know. It's if, how it is. If it's you know, you is. know. If you don't. All right, let's 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 uh, check in with some of our good friends over here on the Instagram. Uh, Rastafari93, Wake and Bake. Uh, dot com landlords. Hello, Mary Jane. You are owned by Snoop Dogg. Accurate statement. <laughs> Accurate statement. That's accurate. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Nui, I, Need Weed, Green Heart. Guys, our green hearts go out to you guys always. Not just 420, not just Tuesdays, Thursdays, not just on About That Time, not just on Mary Jane. All the time, everywhere, green hearts for everyone. Right? Amen. Green hearts are out there. Uh, so we like to kick off the show. Um, we're, we're actually trying to name this segment. It's like, we're going to go through some Instagram p pictures and you're going to tell us the story behind the picture, okay? okay. Does that sound fair? Yeah. What, do you what do you think we should call this segment? Someone um, said, picture me scrolling. Is that a good one? That's cute. What do you think, that though? That is cute. Damn, I'm not as witty as I should be. I don't know. You got some heavy wordplay on your stage name there, so... Well, let me see. We're looking to you to set that wordplay bar high. Uh, it's all right. No pressure. What? You're I'll not think here. on it. I'll yeah, think you'll think on it. it. We'll yeah. do the segment, and then you, you see if you come up with anything, right? Yeah. I mean, because you definitely, you definitely flip, it, flip it up. You're Parmesan out here, right? You know, Parmesan dough. It's that Parmesan life. Are you eggplant parm or are you chicken parm? I'm a chicken parm. I don't eat eggplants. No. Uh, Pass on eggplants. I, in I'm all contexts. Not a fan. Eggplants. The Chinese eggplant food. emoji, I'm a fan of. <laughs> no eggplants except eggplant emoji hey, is no. allowed, guys. Hey, Let nah. the eggplant emoji live. <laughs> All right, here's picture number one from our unnamed Instagram segment. Oh. T tell us about what's going on here. Let's let's show the, let's show these folks right here what what it's that picture is. There we go. There we go. Baylani. All right, chilling with the K one and only. What 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 was this context in which you guys were chilling and hugging so hard? Uh, well, me and Kayla have been friends since eighteen. Uh, she just turned 23. I'm going to be 23 on Friday. Happy um, birthday. Happy birthday Taurus to us. Taurus season. Um, yeah, this photo was our first time seeing each other in like a year or so. 
Um, she had like a little artist talk at Soul House, um, or like some type of brunch. New York or LA or other ones? In Chicago. Chicago um, Soho House. Yeah. Never I been. actually took her to Uncle Remus's Day, which is a very big um, like Chicago chicken place. This is actually a pretty iconic day. Um, and it was also the last day that I saw my cousin pass away last year. Damn, that's a yeah. big day right yeah. there. Yeah, so very special day. Um, big story behind that pic right there. Wow. That's my seal. Well, shout out Kalani. Come hang with us sometimes. Sometime. Here's, a, here's another picture. If you want to share it over with, with our good friends on the Instagram. It's me representing my side of town. It's that, it's that west side. We had a, we had a big instructional in, in uh, hand, hand signs uh, on our last episode, actually. <laughs> wow. Uh, the one and only uh, rapper, uh, Joe Moses. Uh, right. He taught us about the bee life. Uh, we renamed our show About That Bime just for him. Uh, but we did mention to him our friends here, the, our critter click, uh, Fuzzbutt, who's sitting right in front of me, uh, uh, Bowie the cat here, we got our friend the pigeon over there. They're called the critter click, they have a hand sign, that's the critter click hand sign. Joe, Joe said that we should pass on that. See both signs. The, like Compton Crips, the Compton Crips had a little bit of a copyright issue with our hand sign. So the critter click are still in existence, they're just working on a new hand sign. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, they, they got to work on their approach. Right now, they... On the screen, they not looking too much gang. Like it look like well, the pigeon is against the cats and the dogs. You think there's a lack of pigeon and also dog dogs? Every time you see dogs and birds, they be chasing them. So it's like well, I that's think why they they're on separate personally. sides. Can they be together but separate? I mean, is that you possible? got the you got the you got the dogs. Oh, oh, oh. 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 See? Speak and thou shalt be heard. Now you got the pigeon playing both sides. I don't That's know a, how I feel the, about the that. Pigeon, <laughs> pigeon's getting swole, too. Playing both that pigeon sides. Shit that I don't like. Up. Nah, that's Chief Keith. Y'all yeah, supposed to know about that. West now, Side. I right, so Repping it hard. Now we got the uh, Critter Gang. Yeah, that's their They click, just need some ad libs. They're clicked up. Like the Migos. That's all. They just need some ad <laughs> Yeah, you know, you got the. You got the pigeon with that, and you got the meow meow, you know, with the cat. And you got meow meow, that's, woof, woof. that's Bowie's ad lib. Yeah. Meow the, meow. Meow meow. Woof, woof. And that's Fuzz, like, but like the, the Fuzz but the Husky. Oh, we haven't named our pigeon yet, though. So tell us, tell us about throwing up the West Side. So what's, what's going on on the West Side? This was when I uh, opened up for my other sister, Raven Lene, on our first headline tour. Um, she was in Chicago, asked me to open up. Um, and we were sound checking, and my good friend Jackson from 119 uh, got this picture of us on stage. And you know, I just had to represent the gang. That's true. Where I'm from. I'm from the west side of Chicago, so we're very, um, you know, proud of that. Rep your city, guys. Yeah, everyone's from the south side. Like all the famous people from Chicago are from the south side of Chicago, so. Usually. West side. West side giving, has us to some, giving us some love. Yeah. I like that. Uh, you know, critter clicker down with that. Do you guys have a critter click on the west side? No, I don't even have a pet. No pets at all. I'm thinking of getting a pomsky. What's which, a pomsky? Uh, I don't know too much about dogs, so please don't More than me, me, apparently. Um, it's a pomeranian and a Siberian husky mix. There, see, okay, she knows. She like, you got it. Um, and they stay pretty small, and they're just so cute. They're just adorable. Now, did you grow up with the dog? I had a dog when I was a baby, and then um, it got epilepsy. We had to give it away. Oh, no. Um, and then I had another dog. We have pretty bad luck with dogs. I had another dog that got cervical cancer, and it died. Wow. And then our last dog got kidnapped so at that point I was like I'm over dogs three man. strikes and you're out I am so over dogs and I got bit by my weed man's dog and I was really over dogs like what the fuck wait how did you get bit by the weed man's dog man shout out to PJ PJ you're getting a shout out even though your dogs would be biting people out here man PJ wasn't home so his dad had to serve me and uh so when I got there I had met this dog before the dog's name is Smokey and I met the dog before, the dog is big as fuck. And uh, I always talk about how big the dog is, so maybe he just got sick of my shit. And his dad didn't let me like in the door all the way. And so like the dog was just giving me this look like, bitch, do I know you? 
And I was just standing there nervous, like, yeah. And so dude went to, he left the door like cracked and went to go get the weed. And like the dog was just like staring still and I'm getting nervous, like, oh fuck, this doesn't look good. And so I took a step back and he like flew, like flung the door open with his nose and like took one leap and was already on like on my body and like sank his teeth like into my side. I was just like, ah! And so they came rushing out like, oh my God, what's going on? And I was just standing there like, I didn't know what to do. And they like cleaned me up and everything. like, he's never bitten anybody. I'm like, bitch, he just bit me. So what the fuck does that mean? Like dogs be biting. So after that, I was really, I didn't know how to feel about dogs. Like people brought their dogs around. I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'm just chill over here and mind my business. And all my friends started saying I hated dogs. And I'm like, I don't hate dogs. I just want to. I let them do their thing, and I do my thing, you know? We just keep a distance. But hopefully me getting a dog will change my my relationship with them. Absolutely, you know? Once I have my you, own dog. You gotta keep on keeping on. You can't let horrible, traumatic, horrifying experiences of being bit by a dog, you know, overcome your potential for puppy love. I know, and that's where I'm at now. I see my friends have dogs, and they're like, it's so good for your mental health. And I'm like, oh. No, I think I want a dog. And cats have too many attitudes and personalities. So. They're kind of on their own shit. Yeah, that's why I feel like me and cats wouldn't get along. No? Yeah. Pass on the cats. No, they just got attitude problems. So I, mean, I got my own attitude problems. I don't need another motherfucker in the house with attitude problems. Bo so. Bowie over here. Bowie, our cat. Hey, Bowie, how's it going? <laughs> he, you know, his attitude is okay. He's just kind of chilling. He's I like, mean, he's on a loop. It's a simulation, so. I don't know what you're talking about. Loop, <laughs> loop simulation? I have no. I'm sorry, Kanye I'm sorry. has been getting to me lately. Is, is this some is this some technical <laughs> jargon? I'm not familiar with loop simulation. Was this the Matrix? Do you watch Atlanta? Darius says this is all a simulation, including the Critter Gang. Um, they're the critter click, first of all. They're just more like a little group of guys. They're not necessarily a gang per se. They say I mean, like on crit, like on crit, but they say on crit. <laughs> crit, like instead of crit, they say crit. It's the critter click. Bowie, Fuzzbutt, Pigeon <laughs> Friend. They're hanging. They have a pretty good attitude for, for, for a cat, though. Bowie does, I think. He's just yeah. doing his thing. Did you program the cat? <laughs> Guys, cat programming is not something I'm capable of. I have a lot of talents. I br try to bring it the best I can every time. Cat programming, not something I'm capable of. On crit. <laughs> it's true. We on crit. Um, here's another picture from uh, the Instagram. Okay. Hang it, hanging out there. This is me with my favorite slash only purse. I'm not rich, guys, so uh, keep your comments to yourselves. Uh, yes, this is actually editing day um, of the Wild Hours Roses video, and we're outside of, it's either wrap day or editing day, and we're outside of the studio, yours truly studio, um, where we were working on it. Pretty fun day, uh, obviously I was feeling myself, I was with Bay. Yeah, well, and you also had your swag bag. <laughs> I you know? did. That tell, is my, that's my critter, my critter uh, click. Is your bag. Yeah. So tell us about your bag. That bag is from Free People, um, one of my favorite stores. Um, my style is like tomboy mixed with like white girl going to Coachella. So that bag was like right up my alley. I feel you. Good pick. It's nice when you come up on something. Now, does it take a long time for you to like find something where you're like, yeah, that's the one? Um, I hate shopping, so when I go, really I hate shopping because I hate spending money. So when I go and I see stuff I like and I look at the price tag, even if I can't afford it, I'm like, ooh, but do I need it? Like, and I think really, really, really hard. And then unless my, unless like Smino's with me, I usually just don't get it. Like unless I feel like, I can't, like I'm never gonna see it again and it's that crucial. I just kind of like don't shop for real, but it doesn't take me long. It really just is deciding. I have a problem with not thinking about my other clothes. So I have like a lot of clothes that don't go together and then it gets awkward because I'm like, damn, I have pants, but no shirt. And then I have the shirt, but no pants. 
So that's why I just started buying one pieces so I can avoid the exact. Guys, I never thought of that advantage of a one piece, huh? Yeah. You don't have to think you about the You didn't hear top. about the male romper? Oh, I mean, definitely male romper status. I mean, look, hey. it, the origins are in sort of like a male onesie work <laughs> outfit, right? So that's a look that folks have explored over the years. I think it's cool that it's coming back. Do it. I mean, rock a male romper, guys. My dad had a romper in the 80s, and I was like, he had a purse, too. He was like, I had a lot of money in that bag. I was like, but it was a purse, so. Purse and a onesie. Your dad was a female pa fashion pioneer. Who knew that in 2018 he, he would he be so He was Fashion on. Nova before Fashion Nova. Exactly. Exactly. I just missed it. Um, all right, we got another picture from the Gram. This looks like you're in a oh, tropical shit. location doing your thing. I don't know if he's watching, but this is me and Bay in Jamaica. Jamaica. Put that on the screen. Jamaica. Jamaica. Chilling with the bay Jabeka, in Jamaica. Jabeka. It's a good place to take your bay, huh? It was. Um, he was out there for work. I was just mooching. <laughs> Out there mooching. I was out there mooching on the jerk chicken. Oh um, yeah. And jerk lobster. Jerk lobster, that sounds mind blowing. Amazing. I had two lobsters back to back. We also were trying to figure out how the Jamaican currency works, like in comparison to American money. Like whether you were actually like getting stuff for cheaper? No, we were not. We definitely <laughs> Qu weren't. Quick answer now. That's no. what we know. But we had dinner and it was like, 300,000 Jamaican dollars, and we was all looking at each other like, damn, how the fuck did we just spend $300,000? But then it like we did the math and shit. I still don't know how much it was. It was still way too much fucking money. Um, it was like $300, but we ate a lot of food. Like I told you, I had two jerk lobsters. Two, wait, is the jerk lobster jerk? sauce covered in the shell or do they take it out they, of the shell? Jerking is the way, the technique of cooking the food. Right. Which is they wrap it up and they put it like in real fire with logs and shit and like they cook it like fresh in the season, it's jerk seasoning and all of that. And that shit was fucking amazing. I don't even know how I ate all of that, but I definitely took one home because I wasn't ever going to find anything like that in America. I don't even eat jerk food here anymore because of that. Yeah, that, that'll happen. Once you, once you taste the good stuff, it's hard to go back. Uh, here's another one. Uh, some uh, progressive makeup choices in this, yes. in this picture. This is me at Mickey Blanco. Shout out Mickey. Um, shout out Mickey. Um, he's phenomenal. I met Mickey Blanco through Twitter, first of all. I had not heard Mickey's music. He was in Chicago, and my uncle was actually a fan of Mickey Blanco. And Mickey was on Twitter and was like, "Oh, I need a like a woman who's a vocalist and blah blah blah." Which usually I like run far away from tweets like that because like I'm not about to be some random girl. But because my uncle was like such a big fan of him, I was like, "Okay." Um, and he tagged me, and so we started DMing and. We went to the studio. My first impression of him was that he was such a lively person. Like, I am in the studio all the time, but I'm so focused. And like, he was just like having fun and like dancing like to all the beats. They're like really dancing though, like really like pirouettes damn near. And I'm like, oh my God, go off. Like, I aspire to be this lit in the studio. And I realized it was because all of his music that he makes, he really like loves and enjoys and like can dance to. And so like that really inspired me too from that day forward to kind of make more music that I love that much that I'm just in the studio like and I can't sit still. Um, so yeah, we ended up making Loner, which is a song and we did this kind of really futuristic um, virtual reality style video and it was tight the style was amazing the makeup was incredible um and i just had a lot of fun period they treated me like a princess on set and i obviously love being treated like a princess so it was a lot of fun princess treatment always welcome guys on crit yep on crit <laughs> one more picture from tonight's installment of the unnamed instagram segment Oh my I think God. you're doing a t live television performance. We on uh, on Cox News, on Crit. 
I was on um, the news in Chicago, and it was a Rising Star segment. Shout out to Mauricio, who booked me for that. And I sang Wikipedia, and the video did really well. That's the most views I have on Instagram, is this video. Um, I don't know what it has now, but when I saw it, it was like 10,000 views, and I was like, damn. I ain't never got that many views, like what the fuck? Um, and I was glad that it was a performance because obviously that's what I want people to be viewing and not my selfies, so. Um, yeah, that was pretty lit. My whole family saw that. They were like, oh my God, you on the news, girl, go crazy. Yeah, the city, the city lights up when they see that happening. It's good stuff. Uh, anyway, guys, that's been tonight's installment of uh, the Unnamed Instagram segment. I would like to bring to your attention, guys, one of our favorite vape pen and cartridge companies, Mez Brand, repping Colorado hard. They brought us the Unnamed Instagram segment tonight. Hello. Uh, I hope you had fun. Uh, we definitely had fun. You should check out Mez uh, vaporizers and cartridges uh, in the Colorado, in, soon in the California. Uh, it's a great brand. It's a cool product. Uh, check it out. Uh, the next segment on tonight's installment of about that time is called Roll the News. Uh, we like to take some headlines from Mary Jane, cannabis-related news headlines. Hey, now. Uh, and we uh, we just discuss them, see what's cooking, see what you think. What's cooking? Story uh, from tonight. Uh, uh, patients in Colorado and Illinois could soon trade opioid prescriptions for cannabis. Uh, now, a lot of uh, the laws that have been passed in states uh, legalizing medical marijuana uh, have been kind of oriented towards uh, creating a medical market, but those medical markets haven't always been directly directly uh, trying to solve problems like the opioid prescription crisis. And it was hard for doctors to prescribe things that they normally would prescribe opioid f opioids for to prescribe cannabis. Um, mm -hmm. But this just seems like that makes sense. Don't, do you think cannabis can be a, a healing uh, drug that uh, would be better for people than opioids? I think uh, cannabis and you know, things like CBD oils and the more non-addictive alternatives should definitely be used and prescribed because things like opioids and things like, I was on Ritalin in high school, which was the what they gave me instead of Adderall because of the type of insurance I had. But Ritalin is something that can be cut up into speed, which was a drug. Um, and then Kanye West recently came forward and said he had problems with an opioid addiction, um, people have Xanax addictions, and there's just so many alternatives, and I feel like that more of these corporations are more so focused on the money, like they're most more so focused on um, the profit instead of actually like healing people and making sure that people aren't getting addicted. Um, and so I feel like that aspect of the medical industry is where people can't really trust it. People don't really trust their doctors and their hospitals, you know, not to mention like all of the statistics in the medical industry about how people of color and black people are, are treated and are diagnosed. Um, so I just think that better alternatives should be accessible to everybody. Um, and if we are prescribing things to people that are highly addictive and that are gonna give them more side effects than they had when they came to the doctor, um, we should be looking into other, other alternatives. Very well put. Uh, couldn't agree more. Anyway, shout out to Colorado in Illinois, uh, soon to have cannabis prescriptions. Uh, seems like a step in the right direction. Uh, story number two from tonight's installment of Roll the News. Uh, the NFL denies the first ever request for medical marijuana therapeutic use exemption. Uh, NFL running back Martin James, uh, he was, uh, cited for cannabis use by the mm. NFL uh, after he had had an injury, uh, but he doesn't want to hide his cannabis use, uh, and therefore he tried to uh, apply for a therapeutic use exemption, uh, and the NFL said thumbs down. Uh, mm. And that's going to compromise his potential uh, career as a free agent, uh, because if he's already in trouble like that, uh, getting signed to one of these big teams uh, is tough. Uh, so. Uh, I would say NFL definitely, NFL definitely has not been on the forefront of being accepting when it comes to cannabis. Of anything. Yeah, of uh, anything. Of anything. Well um, put. I, I think that, first of all, I'm not really a big fan of the sports industry. 
Um, I used to watch sports in high school, but I kind of like strayed away from it. Um, I f do feel like if the players are playing actively, like in the season, I don't think that they should be smoking or using all of that stuff affects your body physically, especially if you're an athlete. So like, you know, if I was a coach, I definitely wouldn't want my players that are on the field to be smoking or be high. But as far as like players that are off the field, um, players that are injured and stuff like that, I don't think that it should be used against them. Um, like as far as like their career or them being able to play, I just, I don't think that's fair. Um, and I think that, I mean, Honestly, we need like some type of independent league other than the NFL if they're not going to be accepting of a lot of things, you know. It's not just even the weed, like. Totally. We know. So it wouldn't be like just a weed football league. It would be like weed and other things people should be supporting. <laughs> no, just all of the of. things that they're against. Like because they, I, I'm they just going to go out there. You probably could find a sponsor for weed football league. Do you hey. think? You could at least have a Colorado, who, California the, team, who's Seattle, gonna Washington. Who's going to want a bunch of high-ass athletes on the field? But maybe that's, that's part problem. of the fun. You know what I mean? It's like, hey. who can, everyone has to take three or four bong rips and then actually play football you know it could all be like i think is injuries that's it a lot of fucking injuries and that is not okay so no injuries guys an injury free <laughs> league in in general actually that's a good thing to point about when we're talking about the nfl especially when someone's injured uh you know getting them something that works for them is very important mm -hmm. uh story number three from tonight's installment of roll the news uh, Seattle is going to clear over 500 cannabis convictions that date back to the 80s. Now, we've seen this quite a bit in states and cities where legalization is kind of coming online, yeah. uh, where some attorney generals have been proactive about going through the roles, seeing who's been wrongly convicted uh, under the law, and overturning those charges to make sure those people can walk free if necessary. Right. Um, I think that that is amazing. Uh, shout out to Seattle for sure. Yeah. Uh, it needs to go farther. It needs to go broader. Uh, we need to make sure that anyone who is behind bars for a cannabis-related conviction is free before people are out there making money off of it in a legal marketplace. Uh, let's get our uh, priorities straight, folks. Yeah, uh, I agree. So, but anyway, still shout out to Seattle. That's a step yeah, in the right direction. Yeah, Seattle is dope as fuck. But I think, I think besides that, nonviolent <clears throat> crimes in general need to be people need to get exonerated for all of that because cannabis and motherfuckers is being locked up for weed is only as the a small percentage of that. We have one of the largest prison populations in the fucking world, and we need to start um, finding alternatives for people that are committing nonviolent crimes. Facts. All facts. Absolutely. Now, this is the most important question I've asked you thus far on tonight's show. Have you ever taken a bath in weed? No. Well... Now you can, oh. thanks to the Bella cannabis infused bath bomb. Shout out to Bella for sponsoring this segment. This is cute. Boom. A bath bomb. Cannabis bath bomb. What do you think about that? You ready? See, I, when you said bath and weed, I really thought you meant like, oh, just sitting in the bath. Just like break up an, just no, break up an eighth shit. in the bathtub and breathe deep. <laughs> nah, that's weird. Now nah, this is bomb though. Uh, Shout out Bella. No pun intended. This is bomb. Th this bath bomb is bomb, guys. Bella, thank you. Th thanks, Bella. Uh, that was roll the news, guys. Uh, so, the next segment we do on about that time uh, is our astrology segment. We call it astrology time. We have Ooh. to kind of go into a different little. Now you talk about language. We, hey, we, no. we break we break the salt crystal lamp out. You Ooh. know, we get into sort of the astrology time world. Okay, don't be doing no, don't pull out no Ouija board. And shit no, like there's that. no Ouija board. Okay, uh, yeah. But I'll tell I'll you. Turn I'll, the lights I'll off and shit. Let me tell you how astrology time goes. Our friends out there all know the deal. Uh, what we do is we uh, do your horoscope, okay. and we pull some funny lines out of it, and you can just tell us if you think they're on point or not. You ready for that? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> Too much? Too real? No, no, no. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, everyone should know you're a Taurus, moon in Cancer. I'm also a moon in Cancer, sensitive hey. disposition. Let's, hey, let's high five. Let's have a high five. Moon in Cancer high five, guys. That was the first ever about that time moon in Cancer high five, just hey. in case you wanted to know. The stars are aligned. They're, they're definitely aligned. Definitely aligned. We're, we're entering into your sun. You're about to have, uh, you're about to have your birthday. It's pretty exciting. Tour, tour season turn. is in effect, guys. Yes, it is. No bull. It is. Um, okay, element number one from your horoscope. 
moves money about a lot and sometimes spends recklessly. Have you been known to like drop crazy bucks once in a while? Well. <laughs> Jerk lobster. I mentioned earlier <laughs> that I am frugal. Speaking of signs my mercury is in gemini so i am a very dual person i have a side of me that tells me not to spend money and then i have the side that is spending the money so <laughs> yes at times but it's i need to get my priorities straight because i will spend so much time debating in the clothing store but when it's food or wheat swipe it sign me up <laughs> all right you got Give your me priorities the straight clearly it's it's terrible. I need to. Um, I am doing better though. Now that I'm on tour, this is probably the most I've smoked just by myself since <laughs> I started tour. So. There you go. There you go. All right. Element number two from tonight's installment of Astrology Time. Uh, she dominates her associates and colleagues. She is the same in love life. Are you a dominating colleague and lover? Oh my God. Um. <laughs> that looks like a yes, guys. I'm not like I don't. I'm not like a sign I language guy, but say, I would say like body language. But that seems now. like it could be a yes. Okay, I'm just gonna say I don't want to say down. This word dominates. This is a strong word. You can dis you can disagree. I That's have the been point. Said it has been said to me a lot of times. I'm intimidating, um, and I think the best thing is I surround myself with people who can respect that I can be an intimidating person because one, it's not my fault, it's just my energy. You know, like when people, when I'm around, people are drawn to me and that's just what it is. So it's like, people are drawn to me but I'm also standoffish and that's what intimidates people because it's like, I want to talk to you but you look like you want to kill me. So should I? And right, I'm like, right. probably not. So. Uh, yeah, when I'm on set, like when I'm filming and all that, um, there have been times where I kind of had to assert myself and there are times where people can really like respect that I know what I'm doing and I'm not an asshole, like I'm very kind to people which kind of surprises people once they get to know me because again, I look at people like I want to kill them if I don't know them. Um, so once they get to know me, they're like, oh, okay, you're actually pretty, uh, a sweet girl inside. Little Cancer Moon. There you go, Cancer Moon. Uh, let's do another another Cancer Moon high five, I think. Yes. Yeah, Cancer Moon. You gotta, it's a very... do, you gotta ripple the waves. Okay, okay one more, one more. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. the Cancer Moon high five, guys. It's a very specific high five. If you ever see anyone doing it, you know that they're both Cancer Moons. I know. Uh, third element from tonight's installment of Astrology Time. She has difficulty in adopting, adapting to new technology. You hate new technology or are you with new technology? Oh. That's facts, but I learn fast. So if I if I want like if I want to like learn something new, I can. But like realistically, I don't be trying to do all the new stuff. I don't understand why we always gotta upgrade like the hover the kids on the hoverboards and the damn. Let's get a skateboard. Why why we gotta put an engine in the skateboard? Why we gotta have people? Skateboards with engines. And we should just the use the Alexa sidekick. and the Google Home, and yeah. then like the I gotta talk into my cable remote, and I gotta say I don't like none of that stuff. But I'm willing to learn. I'm open. Open-minded, open but hesitant, maybe. Open-minded, but not hesitant. Just like why? Why? <laughs> why? Life is, life can be chill without why? those things too. I will say I hate. I hate automated conversations. I hate them. Oh yeah, I can't. I lose my mind every time. Like every time it's longer than 10 minutes of me talking to a computer, like I just scream operator and like Smee will be around and he'll be like, chill. And I'm like, you don't understand. Like, I just want to talk to somebody real. <laughs> like, and I feel like a granddad, like somebody's granddad is just like over it. Yeah. And I am over it. Yeah, it happens. Um, Element number four from tonight's installment of Astrology Time. She can spend hours in the bathroom preparing to go out. Do you, do you like to prepare? If I'm going to be ready, I mean, how else she going to be ready unless you prepare? Always be prepared. You know, and then, you know, my man might say, get cute. Well, if I get cute, I'm going to need two hours. And when I'm done with the two hours, you got to be ready to go. Or it's going to be three hours. And I don't have time for that. 
because then I'm gonna go to sleep. So. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta know when to say when. I, as a Taurus, I love sleep. Naps are my like superpower. Shout out to naps. They can be a superpower. A superpower nap. Because people say power nap, but I don't know if I've ever heard anyone say superpower nap. I have super powerful naps. Like I nap before I go on the stage. Sometimes I go up there looking like I woke up, like I got sleep in my face. <laughs> but I'm killing it. They just like, damn, this bitch look like she sleeps still. Like she's she going crazy. Beautiful, beautiful job. Do you dream hard? Yeah. Now and now that I'm not smoking on tour, I've been having the most weird dreams. Last night I had a dream that I was in Target trying to buy this bra, and my older sister was like, "Don't fucking buy that bra!" Like. Why are you buying that bra? It's it's too no, don't get it. And I was just so confused. Like, what's happening right now? And a lot of my dreams are very lucid, so it's just like they're hilarious to me because I'm still me, like fully in my dream, but everything else is just weird as fuck. And then I wake up and I'm like, Oh, okay, that wasn't happening actually. That was all a dream. That was that was all a dream. Nice. Well, that's what it is. Well, thank you for joining us for Astrology Time. That was pretty fun, right? Yeah, it was. You know, we go through the horoscope. We learn a thing or two. This all crystal lamp is really essential, you know what I mean? Bring, brings the vibe. It is. Um, well, before we end uh, today's show, we'd like to give you a chance to shout out uh, the projects you have coming up. Let everybody in the land of Mary Jane know what they should be checking for. Uh, new song this Friday. My birthday is Friday. Um, new song on my birthday. That's song, a good one. It's called Energy. So I'm trying to bring the energy in. That's what salt crystals do. They kind of clear the energy. So I'm just trying to clear the energy and start the, the rollout for the project. And I'm really excited. Um, kind of nervous, but uh, I'm just overall excited. And this is like the first installment of the pathway to the project. So. Guys, first installment to the pathway, 2018. <laughs> Be checking for John Doe. Playing in a, uh, a, a town near you sometime soon, I yes, imagine. Santa. Listen on the internets and the streams. On SoundCloud, on Apple Music, SoundCloud. Spotify, and the titles. Guys, thanks so much. For, moons. Yep. Guys, thanks to THE Design. Thanks to Mez Brands. Thanks to Bella. Thanks to John Doe. It's been an amazing time. It's Thank about you. that time. Check back in with us again soon. On crit.